Well, <clears throat> now today I am going to give you the ideas about the second exercises. I think all of you have finished the first exercise from square square root. Now I am going to start the second exercises. In the second exercise, uh, few things is required to discuss about the squares number. The discussion that suppose in the last exercise I have told you that um, to check if it is a perfect square, a number is a perfect square or not. For that I have told you that um, we will have to check by using prime factorization method. I have told you these things also that um, in the further exercises uh, many different method is there for finding that if a number is a perfect square or not. So in that particular regards I am actually now entering into the second exercises. In the second exercise what it says that few rules are there. We have to learn that particular rule. Right. The rule says that if a number, rule number one, it is given in your book, I am going to discuss only. The rule number one, a number, try to understand, I am not going to write everything here. If a number is ending with 2, 3, 7 or 8. If a number is ending with any one of this number, then it is not a perfect square. As for example, as for example, 122, it is ending with 2. So it is not a perfect square. Suppose if they are asking you that check if this number is perfect square or not. Simple should not go through that particular prime factorization method. Simple you should write a line that no it is not a perfect square because it is ending with 2. Similarly if a number is ending with 3 it is not a perfect square. Similarly 7 it is not a perfect square. Similarly 8 it is not a perfect square. So a number if it is ending with 2, 3, 7 or 8 then it is not a perfect square. This is rule number 1. Rule number 2. Rule number two. Rule number two. If a number ending with odd number of zeros, then it is not a perfect square if a number ending with odd number of zeros suppose if the number ending with say suppose 1000 odd number of zeros three num three zeros are there it is not a perfect square no need to check no need to check i think it is clear now you may ask, sir, what you want to say? If a number ending with even number of zeros, will it be a perfect square always? I am not saying that things. Suppose as for example, 100, it is ending with odd number of zeros. Uh, sorry, even number of zeros, two zeros, even number of zeros. So naturally, it should be a perfect square. But not always true. Suppose in spite of 100, if I am going to consider 200 or 300, or 400. Out of these four numbers, I am finding only these two numbers are perfect square. So when even number of zeros will come, that time you should not claim directly that it is a perfect square. In that case, you will have to verify how by prime factorization method. But suppose if it is ending with odd number of zeros, no need to verify. Similarly, in the first rule, suppose if it is ending with 2, 3, 7 or 8, then it is not a perfect square. We are having how many numbers? 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 9. 
So I am telling you if it is ending with 2, 3, 7 or 8, then it is not a perfect square. Now you can say, say, say suppose if it is ending with 4, will it be a perfect square? As for example 144, yes it is a perfect square. But not always. Suppose if we remove 1 from here, it will be 44. In that case it is not a perfect square. I think it is clear that what I want to indicate that if a number ending with 1, 2, 3, uh, 1, 2, 3, 7 or 8, it is not a perfect square. No need to verify. But if it is ending with any one of this particular number, then it may or it may not be. In that case, verifications will require how prime factorization method. Similarly, if it is ending with even number of zeros, does not imply that it is always a perfect square. Yes, it is quite been clear if it is ending with odd number of zeros, it is not a perfect square. But if it is ending with even number of zeros, the number may be a perfect square or may not be. We are not been sure. This is about the second rule. Now, uh, the third rule, a quite common sense rule. Uh, what it says, I am going to rub it because space is not there. Uh, the square of any even number always is even. Square of any rule number three. Square of any even number. Even number is always even. That is, I am going to say twelve. Each square twelve is an even number. So it will be 144. Yes, it is coming even. This is the third rule. Fourth rule, the square of is any odd number. Odd number always is odd. Say as for example, in spite of 12, now I am going to consider 30. So it will be 169. So it is odd. This is fourth rule. The next one, obviously, I am going to skip the fifth properties. The sixth property, uh, the fifth property is also you can say the square of a proper fractions smaller than the fractions. What is the meaning of fraction? Proper fraction. Two type of fractions are there. I am talking about now the fifth. I am not going to skip. What is the meaning of proper fractions? Proper fractions means whose denominator is more than the numerator. As for example, as for example, uh, 3 by 5, this is a proper fraction. This property says that square of this number, square of this number is 9 by 25. And they want to say that 3 by 5 always will be less than 9 by 25. This is only happening in case of proper fractions, not improper. If denominator is more, then this number, resultant number, squares number, always will be big. Um, no, I am wrong. I am wrong. Just opposite every time. Uh, 3 by 5 always will be, 3 by 5 always will be bigger than 9 by 25. Okay. Always will be bigger than that is if it is it is true only in case of proper fractions. That is this particular things uh, actually always it is with in our mind that square of any number is always more than the given number. As for example, 144 is bigger than 12. It is not true here. In proper fraction, it is not true. In in proper fractions, it will be true. This is about the fifth property. Now next property. Next property, for the next property, I am going to verify one this is six property that n plus m plus 1 whole square minus m square. m is any integer. What will happen? You know very well this formula a square minus b square, which is equal to a plus b into a minus b. 
So this is a square minus b square, which is equal to a plus b into a minus b. Am I right? This m m supposed to be cancelled, which is equal to m plus one plus m into one. No need to write one. This is one property. Why are you are going to use this property? Suppose if they are going to ask you that what will be the value of 167 square minus 168 square. This number always should be less than this number by 1, 166. Then what will be the answer? I am telling you 167 plus 166 which is equal to 6 plus 7, 13 carries 1, 12, 13, carries 1, 3. 3, 33, very nice number. Okay. So, this is only, you are, you are going to use this particular property in this particular cases only. Next number, next uh, property, property number 7, property number 7, Property number seven that the sum of the square of four or or, um, or consecutive consecutive odd number odd number is is the square of square of the number of odd numbers yes a little bit confusing no mm -hmm. I'm going to clearly clarify it as for example as for example, yes, it should start with from 1. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. The sum of the consecutive odd number is the number of squares of odd numbers. That is what I want to say that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 will be how much? How many? Odd numbers are there 4, it will be nothing but 4 square, which is equal to 16. No need to, if you are going to count, it will come something like that. Uh, 7 plus 3, 10 plus 5, 15, 1, 16 is coming. Similarly, suppose if one question I am going to consider here, suppose the question is 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 9, 11, 13, 9 plus 11 plus 13 will be how much? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7 square, which is equal to 49. I think it is clear. Now, next property from 7th to 8th property Pythagorean triplets. Pythagorean triplets. Suppose three numbers are there, are there uh, that numbers are nothing but M, N and P. Pythagorean triplets it says that if M square plus N square will come as P square, then M, N and P are Pythagorean, Pythagorean triplets. Triplets. As for example, as for example, as for example, 5, 12 and 13. These three are the very popular Pythagorean triplets. Because 5 square plus 12 square, which is come as 25 plus 144. And you will find it is come as 169, which is equal to 13 square. So 5, 12 and 13 are the Pythagorean triplets. Next is
uh, one formula is there for finding the Pythagorean triplets. That one is that 2m m square minus 1 m square plus 1 always are Pythagorean triplets. m are integers. 2m m square minus 1 m square plus 1 are Pythagorean triplets. So these are the few properties. Learn these properties and the next class only we are going to solve the questions from this property. If suppose you will have any doubt on this particular property, you may put the doubts on the, in the message box and when I am going to start the next class, I will clarify, I shall try to clarify that. Okay.